everyone. Welcome back to Making Art with Mrs. Gordon. Today, we will be making a series of Halloween pumpkins. So try not to get spooked. Before we get started, first thing you'll need is a clean white sheet of paper. You'll need a pencil, and you'll need some coloring supplies. You can use crayons, I have a few here, or you could use color pencils. That is also an option. Let me slide mine out so you can see. And you can also use markers. So any markers that you might have, I have a few, but I don't know if I'm gonna use them as of yet. So make sure you have your supplies ready and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we are gonna make some really cool Halloween pumpkins. We have the choice to kind of make different styles if we'd like and also different colors. Usually pumpkins are orange, but we're gonna try to make and create some that are a little different. So stick with me as we go through the process. So before we actually create our pumpkins, I'm gonna show you a few different ways we can create them. One way I usually create mine um, I'm going to show you that one first, and then I'm going to show you some other options. So I'm actually going to draw mine a little smaller, just so everyone can see. First step to create your pumpkin, if you want to do this way, is you can draw an oval. So I always like to sketch when I'm creating my work. I don't like to just draw one continuous line. Sketching gives me control and allows me to create exactly what I want without making too many mistakes. So first you'll sketch your oval. This will be the center of our pumpkin. After you make your oval, we're actually going to echo the shape of that oval several times on both sides till we get to the size that we prefer. So first I'm gonna start off on the left side and I'm gonna echo the shape of the oval, which is a curved line to the left. I'm gonna echo that shape a few times until I feel like it's wide enough on the left side. So again, sketching, I'm drawing that curved line again, and then I'll do it one or two more times depending on my preference. And I think for now, I'll leave it that way. And then you'll just repeat the step on the opposite side. And feel free again, you can create as many of these curve lines as you like. Just keep in mind, the more you make, the wider your pumpkin will be. So once you have your pumpkin pretty much the way you want it to be, Again, make just any corrections you'd like. You'll do the next step. So of course our pumpkin needs a stem. So at the very top, I'm gonna draw this curved, these two curved lines, which is super simple. And then I'm gonna just connect them with a circle or an oval line, or uh, not line, but shape. And then that gives me my stem. And I am gonna add these long lines inside of it just to give it the look of a vine. Once I have that, my next step is to create, um, actually that's one way to create a pumpkin. So we're gonna stop right there. That's one way. If you find that way to be a bit difficult, there are other ways. So another way we can create our pumpkin, we can kinda almost take on the form of a heart, similar to a heart, not exactly. So at the very top, we're actually gonna draw a V, a very wide V. So that's your first step. So if you don't like this, particular pumpkin shape, you can do this shape. Drawing a V, and then from one corner of the V, I'm actually gonna start with the corner on the left. I'm gonna draw a round or a curved line that focuses or points to the left. So curving around as best I can, and notice that I am sketching. I am not drawing just one continuous line. And then on the opposite side, I do the same thing. So I'm just, whatever I do on the left, I will repeat on the right. When I get to the bottom, I don't want to just connect. 
I actually instead I'm going to just make a small indentation a small dent at the bottom just because that's how some the pumpkins do have that at the bottom you don't have to do it for all it just depends on the where um, it depends which way you're looking at the pumpkin after you have your shape and you're satisfied with it so first again that V and then make that curved line on the left and then the same curve on the right and then a small dip here at the bottom. You don't have to. You can just make it completely round. It's up to you. Once you do that, we're going to make the inside, which kind of looks like these lines over here. Starting at this V at this point here, we're going to actually make a curve line and we're going to try to connect it to the bottom here. So first find the center at the bottom of the pumpkin. So where you made that small dent, try to find the center of it. Make sure it's in the middle as best as you can get it. Then from here, this bottom point, we're going to draw a curved line. Notice I'm curving to the left and I'm connecting to that point that I made earlier when I found the center. Then I will repeat that step, but I won't. And I'll just continue to connect to the bottom not necessarily to this point but I'll get pretty close so I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna curve down and then I think I'll add one more erase anything that you don't like and then on the opposite side, I'll repeat the same steps again, starting at the bottom at this bottom point here. I'm going to connect it to that point that I put earlier at the bottom when I'm found center. And then I'm going to repeat since I have two more curved lines, I will add two more on this side just to make sure it's even and it's symmetrical. All right, and now that pumpkin is done. The next step is just to add the stem. So curve line, curve line, and then connect it with an oval. You can even kind of add a back to it so it doesn't feel empty back there. And then that's that pumpkin. So you can do it either way. You can do it this way or you can do it this way. All right, so I went ahead and just drew myself two different pumpkins using the very first style we discussed the first time. We are going to make these pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns. So to do that, we are first going to add the eyes. So I'm actually going to make two different jack-o'-lanterns. Actually, yeah, I think I'll do two. I'm going to make two different jack-o'-lanterns, give you more of a goofy one, maybe one a little bit more simple or normal or the one we're used to doing and if i can think of any more styles i'll add a few options so the first jack-o-lantern our traditional one so we'll do a traditional one first that one usually has the triangular eyes nose something that we are pretty pretty familiar with so first we're going to start out by drawing a triangle so we're going to decide where the eye is going to be so i think for my eyes i think i'm going to put one here and then one here. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to draw a triangle. Wherever I draw that triangle, if there's a line going through it, of course, I'll go back and erase that. And then on the opposite side, I want to make sure the triangle that I draw for the second eye is the same height, that it's not taller or lower or higher or lower than this one. And I also want to make sure it's the same size so I don't have one large eye and one small one. So do your best to try to figure out exactly where it needs to be. You can always grab a ruler if you want to make sure it's exact. So get it as close as you as you possibly can. And those lines that you see that are going inside of my triangles, I do I will erase those because if this was really a jack-o-lantern in real life, we would have cut this out of the pumpkin. So there will be no there wouldn't be any lines or anything inside of the eyes. After that, I am then going to add in the nose, which is also a triangle. So right in between the two eyes, I'm going to draw a triangle for the nose. But of course, don't put it right in between. 
drop down a little bit lower where the nose would usually be like for us on our face and again you can make it bigger or smaller it's up to you and that's my first one so now that I have my eyes and my nose I'm gonna make the mouth so I'm gonna do a traditional mouth that we are familiar with so to do that I'm actually gonna make a smiley face a large smiley face so first for the top lip I'm gonna put a curved line so for a big smile if I wanted to draw a smiley face and the bottom lip I'm actually not gonna make it as curved I'm just gonna kind of drop down like a letter U so I almost drawn like the letter U for the bottom lip okay then I'm gonna add some teeth to make them kind of goofy so I'm gonna add a tooth here at the top under the top lip maybe a tooth here for the bottom lip or right above the bottom lip and maybe one more tooth just to make them kind of goofy his teeth are square just to keep him looking more silly and not threatening and once you're done drawing in those teeth you do want to just erase right above the teeth you want to erase the part of the smile that's right above the tooth and for the bottom lip just right below the tooth okay you see that hope that makes sense so that's our first one and I'm just gonna go back and clean up the mouth a bit just to make sure I can really see where the mouth is right so for our next one um, I'm actually gonna add instead of doing triangular eyes I'm gonna show you how to do more of a round eye or oval like eyes so I'm gonna put one here so if you notice it's pretty wide but it's not round it's not round it's not it's like in between a circle and an oval so I put it again in the same place that I put the triangle I put it right on top of that line I'm gonna do the same thing here add another and again trying to keep it the same height so keep it in the same height as this one not higher or lower than it and the same size as best I can it might get a little bit bigger I'm trying to prevent that as best I can might have to go back and you might have to go back and forth and fix and adjust and that's okay because I have to do the same everything isn't perfect the very first time we do it always okay so that's as good as it's gonna get it for the second so next step I actually want to add in a circle on the inside of that eye and a circle here the circle doesn't have to be there it could be lower it could be in the middle it's just a pupil for the eye and the rest is going to be empty so you want to make sure you go back and erase that line that you added this one you can kind of make this uh, make give him I think I want to make this one goofy too and then I think I'll do a scary one underneath so I might have to add another pumpkin so I think I want to give this one a goofy smile so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that um, I'm gonna draw the letter U right in the middle and I'm actually gonna go back and put in uh, the nose after I'll do the nose after we finish the mouth so I put the letter U then I'm going to put two lines, diagonal lines, on the sides. And then from those diagonal lines, I'm going to bring the mouth down, just like I did here. Curve downward like another U. I'm going to curve down like that again here and go around. But this, uh, actually I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to go all the way around until I get to the other side. It won't stay this way but we're gonna um, change it a little bit what I'm gonna do to change it is I'm gonna add in a tooth right here at the bottom and again erasing the bottom lip that's right next right underneath that tooth and I think I want to just make his mouth make this not so round I want to make this almost feel like a tooth of its own by itself 
So I just want to square off those edges a little bit just to make them kind of goofy and silly. And then once I'm done with that, we're going to go back and add in the nose. And this is just an optional mouth. You might not like that one. You might prefer this one. You don't have to do this one. And then for the nose, I'm actually going to make it circular. Eh, I'll do more oval. So I'm going to widen that a bit. And that's him. He looks silly. He looks like he's having fun. And that's more of a silly jack-o'-lantern. So let's do one more. I'm actually going to add in one really quickly. All right. So I went ahead and drew another jack-o'-lantern. I actually started to draw the eyes, but I had a epiphany and thought of a different type of eye we can do. So for this jack-o'-lantern, we're actually going to make it creepy, right? But instead of triangular eyes, I thought of a better way. So we're actually going to do kind of like crescent moon shapes, which are very similar or close to like the letter D. So on both lines, we're going to draw the eye, just like we did here, right on those lines as like a target point or a place to start. So I'm actually going to start on the right side this time, and I'm going to draw a very, uh, a very, not very curved, but a lightly curved line. And then underneath, I'm going to draw another lightly curved line because I'm going to make that crescent moon shape. Okay. On the other side, I want to do the same thing. So do your best to try to keep it even. Do your best to keep it in the same place on this side as the other and also to keep the size as similar as possible. You might have to erase and go back and adjust, but that is okay. And if you hear any baby in the background, that's just my daughter. So hopefully she'll let me finish drawing before she... uh ask for food or a bottle or anything like that once we have the eyes in place i'm still going to do the triangle for the nose so i'm going to add a triangle right in between the eyes but again make sure you lower it you don't want it at the same place and then for the mouth we're actually going to do a large mouth but we're going to change the teeth we don't want these square fun teeth we actually want to kind of give them fangs but the mouth i'm going to make it very large to make it even more creepy and scary so first we want to do a big curved line and I'm going to stretch that curved line really wide so notice I'm going almost to the edge I'm going to almost to the end of my pumpkin but I'm stopping short at these two lines so I have that curved line and underneath I'm going to do another curved line and I'm going to connect from this corner going around and connect to that corner once I have the mouth I'm going to add teeth, but these teeth are going to be like fangs. So I'm going to go in and add these fang like teeth. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Okay. And I do want to go back and get rid of this line wherever the teeth are the fangs should go. Um, not the fangs, but the line above it, the lip above it should not be there wherever the teeth are. So you want to go back and erase those lines. So that's really just a guide. If there's no tooth, keep the line there. So there's no tooth here, so I do want to keep the line there. But wherever there is a line, wherever there is a tooth, I want to erase this guided line underneath it. Also, if you notice, this line is going through my eyes and through my mouth, so I do want to erase that as well. And now that I have that in, now I have my mouth. So I have my fun, playful jack-o'-lantern, my kind of goofy one, silly one, and then my mean one right here, right? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to begin coloring. So let me go ahead and put my pencil and things to the side and we're going to start coloring. All right, now I'm back. So I have my colored pencils here and I think I'm actually going to change some of the colors of my jack-o'-lanterns. Usually jack-o'-lanterns or pumpkins are orange, but I actually think I want to try some other colors. So I think I'll make this first one the traditional color if that's what you want to do. 
I'll make him blue and I think I'll make him more of a red color. I am going to use different shades of each color just so I can have some value. And remember, value means light and dark of a color. So, for example, blue. These are both different values of blue. This is a light blue. This is a dark blue, but they are both blue. So I think for each one, I'm going to try to use two uh, colors, but different shades. One dark and one light just to get some more variation in my work. But I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. Please take, go ahead and watch the rest of this. And then I'll come back and wrap us up. I just wanted to pause the video for one second or uh, pause this section just to explain what I'm doing. This yellow, after I added that, I am going back over with orange just to keep this all very light. Um, I put the yellow under it so it all would seem very light at the end. But my orange, as I'm putting it over, I'm not coloring heavy. I'm coloring very lightly. So I wanted to point that out just in case you wanted to do this. Do not, you can, with your yellow, you can color very heavy first. And then when you put the orange on top, color it light. So the yellow still shows through. And once you color over it, those edges, I'm going to make those a little darker. So those I'm going to press a little harder. Or I'm going to do more layers of orange just to get the edges darker than the center. Okay. So again, pressing heavy with the yellow, but then when you go to orange, press lightly.
So, I finished coloring all of my jack-o'-lanterns. These are all the different options you can do. So, with the colors, we have a normal jack-o'-lantern. This one started off goofy. I think he looks more like ghost-like. And then we have our creepy or spooky jack-o'-lantern at the bottom. And if you notice, for the mouths, eyes, and nose, I did color them in differently. So for these top two, I did black. And for this one, I did uh, yellow. You can decide which one you would prefer. The yellow is usually because after you cut um, a jack-o'-lantern, after you put the design in, a real one, you would usually put a candle inside, which will cause this yellow glow. If there is no candle, you would usually get this dark uh, color here this black which it would look like that in real life without a candle so it's really what effect you want to go for i really hope you enjoyed watching i hope you create your own jack-o'-lantern for halloween i hope it's fun or spooky or whatever you prefer thank you so much for coming by and hopefully we can do this again soon thank you for making art with mrs gordon